Good morning, welcome to my humble abode. Today we are off to the capital, Norwich City face Crystal Palace in the Premier League. Um, not feeling too optimistic about this one. I don't know if that's because my two trips to Selhurst Park in the in the past haven't been good ones, um, or whether Norwich's away form is, is a bit of a concern at the moment. Of course, I've only played three, or this this will be the, the fourth away from home today. So um, it's going to be an interesting one by all accounts. Um, of course, Wilfred Zaha, Christian Benteke, Andros Townsend, although Zaha and Benteke are yet to score in the league. Um, Norwich, of course, haven't won since 1996 at Selhurst Park uh, against Crystal Palace. They have won there against Wimbledon in 2001, I think. I'm sure you'll correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, but, yeah, we're actually getting the train down today, so um, I'm leaving in about 15, 10, 15 minutes to walk down to uh, the train station to meet Paddy, Dave and Tony. And, uh, yeah, it should be a bit of an interesting vlog today in terms of uh, what we get up to because Selhurst Park is an absolute nightmare to get to as uh, I'm sure you'll see further down the line. Uh, if, you're, if you're liking these vlogs make sure you, you leave a like. Um, comment below if you're at Selhurst Park. Of course I'm, I'm doing this prior to the game naturally. So yeah, let me know if you're at Selhurst Park what you made of the game uh, and we may well reply to a few as well. Make sure you subscribe and like the video. If there's one thing we all need on a match day vlog it's a cat. Hello. Black cats are lucky, aren't they? Or unlucky? Oh dear. Here we are, London. Uh, fairly smooth train ride, actually, not too bad at all. Now walking to uh, Chief Stage going. Dave's in control, as you might be able to see in front of, uh, of the direction, so leading and Hopefully we make Selhurst Park, but uh, it's quite chilly here in London actually at the moment. Um, sort of overcast, and you see I've got my, my coat on, I've taken the plunge early. Um, but it's quiet actually so far in London. Now in London Bridge Station, just uh, waiting to catch our, our next train to, to go to Norwood Junction. I must say, very impressed with this set, a very, very nice station indeed. Surprisingly quiet for a London station. Um, but yeah, we've got to wait about 10 minutes now for the next train. And then it's just a 10 minute walk to Selhurst Park, so not too bad at all a trip. And uh, I mean, it's, a, it's a hard ground to get to really, considering where it is in proportion to Norwich, but there we go. Final eight to Selhurst Park. About a 10 minute train ride from uh, this Thames Link train. And then uh, we'll be there. Here we are, Selhurst Park. Norwich looking for their first win here against Crystal Palace since 1996. Hopefully fortunes are a little bit better this afternoon. Plenty of Palace branding around the ground. Some nice place of choice there. Nice little fans over here. Big screen, you may be able to see them. Seems like an apt opportunity to put out the now on Instagram, the underscore pinker. Got some uh, stuff on there already, including uh, that there. You can see that. That is a Crystal Zimmerman competition. You can win one of our signed sticker books signed by uh, Norwich City's captain, of course, currently out injured. There's a very good interview with uh, with him um, and, and Paddy, which is on the, the Pinkin YouTube channel as well. But yeah, if you're on Instagram and you, uh, you want all things Norwich City, then the underscore Pinkin is the place to go. You see, we've got 245 followers, chugging along nicely. Only started this week, so not too bad at all. But yeah, get following. Starting 11 are in for today's game. Uh, as you can see, Ralph Fearman does pass a fitness test to start in between the sticks for Norwich City. Uh, Max Ahrens completes his rapid recovery to start the game at right back. He replaces Sam Byram. Uh, Mo Lattner comes in, of course, for the injured Alex Tetty as well. So they're the three changes. Uh, Norwich have uh, uh, three strikers on the bench, and Joseph Dermich, Dennis Shrebeni and Adam Ida. And of course that front four, the formidable four, that uh, will strike fear into a lot of Premier League defences' uh, eyes. Is uh, Gwendy, Stephen, and Cameron and Pookie all play as well? And if I just have to forgive the shake, that's so why I switch tabs. There we go. Here is the Crystal Palace 11. There you go. You see Zaha does start for them. Uh, Townsend and Benteke on the bench. So strong options to come off the bench for Palace. Uh, a robust midfield three of uh, Milivojevic, Kiate, and James McArthur. 
as well. And Martin Kelly, who, who replaces the injured Mamadou Saku in, uh, in their only change. So that's, uh, that's interesting for them as well. Pocket of yellow and green over there, just about make out. Uh, they have been racing the fans over there, and of course, you've got the noise coming out from the there in terms of Crystal Palace. But uh, a bit of a strange setup, you sort of have to come through the stand um, and then sort of run back and through the little corridor, and you end up here. But uh, it's not, not a bad little setup anyway. And uh, they're sort of taking on Crystal Palace, of course, looking for their first win in 15 attempts against the Eagles at this ground. Going to be very, very interesting indeed to see if Norwich can stop uh, the rut and see if they can get away with not losing a uh, third consecutive game on the road. All to play for. pressure in the opening 15-20 minutes or so. Zaha makes a dart down the right hand side, cuts it inside. Um, and I think it falls to James MacArthur and Amadou lunges in, it's reckless, he's not in control. Um, for me it's a penalty and Luka Mirovojevic dispatches that confidently into the top right hand corner of the net past Ralph Fearman. Um, and that was Fearman's final action of the game. He soon got replaced by Michael McGovern who's come in and Really, from that point, the half switch. Norwich City grew into it a lot more, um, created a lot of opportunities. There were um, Capwell in particular, Pukki had a, a left footed volley which, which was uh, saved over the bar. And Norwich have grew into this game slightly, uh, and similarly to last week, we sort of cut it down the middle of the night. Uh, but in the Premier League, Norwich have got to learn that they have to take their opportunities because they've made plenty in converted none, and that can be the difference between three points and no points. So. Second half coming up, and Norwich need to take their opportunities. They're kicking the end of which their away supports are occupying. So hopefully they can draw them on. It's going to be a big second half for Norwich City, and uh, hopefully they can uh, they can reduce the deficit and, um, and turn this game on its head. But it's going to be a big ask against the Palace side, who are disciplined, pragmatic, and defensively organised. Selhurst Park behind me, Norwich City uh, suffer another 2-0 defeat away from home at Selhurst Park. Um, an interesting afternoon to be honest, it, it felt kind of like Crystal Palace um, made the most of their, their opportunities, most of their decent spells if, in possession and probably will reflect on that and, and, and deserve to win. I think Norwich had a brilliant spell prior to, to half time where they did create numerous opportunities without having the conviction to, to make them count and that in the Premier League can, can cost you games and it does feel at the moment like Norwich City don't quite have enough now to manage periods in games um, both when they are dominant in games but also when they're under pressure as well it, it feels like at the moment they're just lacking in, in, in those um, areas in terms of when they do have the positive spells making sure that they count and making sure they profit from them and equally ensuring that in the not so good spells they are resolute and can almost work their way through them to to keep in the game. And um, it was a, a quite a flat performance today. In, in truth, there were there were good bits, probably better than than last week showing it at Burnley. Um, equally, some some not so good bits in there as well. Um, the first goal, Luka Mijovic with, with a confidently dispatched penalty into the top right hand corner after. Ibrahim Amadou uh, recklessly fouls James MacArthur, to be honest, no need to make that challenge in the penalty area. Um, and it was a desperate lunge, it was a, a, a challenge that 
really set the tone and after that Norwich were chasing and um, the more they huffed and puffed the more resolute Palace were they, they're pretty much happy in, in the second half to put two banks of four behind the ball and then look to counter through Sahar and, and Schlupp and then Townsend when he came on he was, he was very impressive and almost provided a different dimension for the Eagles um, in the second half Daniel Fark will reflect on this with um, interest I think in terms of the fact that another two characters have potentially been added to Norwich's very long injury list and Jamal Lewis who may have fractured his elbow and also Ralph Fearman as well who was substituted after the, the subsequent penalty from Milovojevic it just felt a little bit like Palace had a bit too much physicality in midfield for Norwich um, they were able to affect the game in a much more positive way created overloads down in, in wide areas really well and IU was a good sticking point for them um, Norwich did have opportunities, uh, as, as I mentioned before half-time, Timu Puki uh, had a, a volley that was saved um, at, at this end that I'm, I'm sat at now, um, and that was put over the bar by uh, Vincente uh, Chieta. Um, Todd Campwell as well had, had a couple of opportunities, Lewis cut the ball back to him and that was blocked by Martin Kelly in the first half and then in the second half as well, where he sort of shifted the ball nicely onto his right foot but didn't generate enough power to trouble the Palace goalkeeper. So Norwich will reflect on this um, as uh, again as another away defeat that, that they need to learn from and what they need to do is is learn how to negotiate periods in games and, and, and how to come through them because at the moment they don't possess the nous to get through periods in games and, and make their own emphasis on games count. We saw it last weekend at Burnley um, in this division getting the first goal is critical um, particularly away from home and, and often the pendulum is swung by moments in games and it's when that pendulum swings either way that Norwich don't quite have enough to manage um, that at the moment and, and know how to work that in their control and, and that will be of of, of concern to Farker and I think what made Norwich good so, so good last year was, was how ruthless they were, how clinical they were in front of goal and at the moment they're, they're getting a bit found out away from home in an offensive sense I think um, the fullbacks aren't bombing on naturally because of the increased quality in, in, in opponents but they aren't quite bombing on to the same extent and Norwich at times lack a, bit, a little bit of width um, we saw that in the second half when, when Joseph Dermich came on it was a bit more direct into him and, and they looked to play off him so yeah another defeat away from home from, for Norwich obviously the injury crisis doesn't make anything easier Daniel Farker pretty much having to select anyone who's available at the moment and, and trying to construct a, a winning team in the Premier League which is very difficult with a fully fit Norwich City squad let alone with one with um, played with injuries so Aston Villa next week is becoming bigger by the moment it, it's going to be a game at Carrow Road where they are going to need their supporters and they're going to need the will and every ounce of quality they possess in their ranks to get through it and uh, fingers crossed they can get three points and relieve a little bit of pressure going into the international break um, and of course the other side of that is Bournemouth and that international break to me feels crucial to getting some of their injured bodies back um, fit and available so Another tough defeat for Norwich City at Selhurst Park. It's now 16 visits for that all in here. The hoodoo continues. It's actually a worse run than Craven Cottage at this point. So Norwich don't have a, a good record at, at this place and, and that continued this afternoon. The final score, Crystal Palace 2, Norwich, Norwich City 0.